Lots of uh, yachts in uh, IRC4. It's not as big a start schedule as IRC3, which we will get to, but we've got Sigma 38s in here, J35s, we've got Dela 32s and uh, Oyster 37. So a big, big mix here of uh, ancient and modern. And in between, we've also got a huge fleet of Sigma 38s, which I think is probably... So there is the uh, minute hooter for the uh, next starters here in IRC4. And uh, is the line mostly clear of the uh, the ocean races that were starting before them? There's still a few there, haven't we? Does It's not too bad, actually. Um, I mean, one of the... Uh, one of the... Uh, uh, coincid oh, well, handy things for the smaller boats is usually that these big boats charge off and you never get to see them well at least in these conditions you get to look at them a little bit <laughs> and they don't disappear over the horizon but um they're not um there is clear breeze we're out on the i say clear breeze but we're out at, towards the pin end of the line towards the mainland end and uh, you can start to feel a few little zephyrs but they are only zephyrs and uh, with the with the tide starting to turn now it's meaning that the smaller boats can actually pick and end of the line where there's more likely to be a little bit of breeze. So this is the start of uh, IRC4. And uh, one gun there as uh, they get underway. Uh, no, there is another gun. Right. So there's uh, same situation with the uh, previous start. There's somebody battling to get back. That uh, may well be 44 Infanta which is a Rhodes 46, they're still pointing the other way. And uh, other yachts going past, a uh, really colourful uh, yellow, green and black spinnaker on uh, USA uh, 4460, which is uh, just starting at the moment. Who else have you got, Matt? Well, we have got a, a whole array. It's because of Sigma 38 there. It's an, an array of boats that are quite difficult to distinguish because they don't have these this fleet doesn't have a great deal of sponsorship in it which strangely makes it rather difficult to identify them that quickly but uh, those that are out on this pin end and I can see James that's um, the classic boat up there uh, one of the three classics of fractional rig I think that might be Griff Reese Jones isn't it I can just see uh, the yawl out towards the pin end of the line I think uh, Argyle is right out there but I must say, I would prefer to be out at this end of the line now. From now on, I prefer to be here because we can see a little bit of, a bit more cloud activity on the land and you can get across to the mainland from here and hopefully into some more beneficial tide down there. And this fleet does seem to be split in opinion between those that have chosen to start out at the uh, pin end of the line, out towards the mainland, and uh, a slightly larger, larger group that's starting towards the island, and a reasonable gap in between. So two schools of thought for this start. I think one of the things which we should be asking Ian right now is um, all week we've been saying this is a, going to be a spawn boat race. Uh, you had a look at the forecast this morning. Is it still going to favour the class four boats? I think, um, obviously, uh, there's a, a strong chance that the Class 4 boats are going to do, uh, do very well in this race. Um, but um, just looking this morning at some of the high-resolution models, it looks like there's going to be some uh, light air reaching conditions in the middle of the race. Um, for the bigger boats, they're going to see some light air reaching tonight and uh, know, probably light air reaching across the Irish Sea. And we talked earlier about the fact that those boats can can do between 8 and 15 knots, even in, in 5 or 6 knots of breeze. So it's, uh, I think there's still a possibility that one or two of the big boats have, uh, you know, may be able to keep going tonight and today when, when the smaller boats are stopped in the chop and, and in the light air conditions of this evening. The raid is over the line now, number 16, and uh, Argyle, the uh, Griff Reese jones uh, mm. SNS yawl, is uh, 125 further back. So derade has got the, uh, the start there between those two. What are the other things about this uh, class when, uh, just as we motor just gently past some of them and also looking down the entry list, is the number of double-handed entries there are. That's one thing that has grown significantly in recent uh, editions of the Fastnet, and that is uh, doing it two-handed. And um, that seems to be more and more popular, and as James was saying, uh, last time around, for the first time in the history of the event, the event overall was won by a double-handed crew. 
And it's, a, it's an area of the sport that seems to be growing and growing. And you can just see that as we motor down their start line. And just the number of people who are sailing two up. So IRC4 underway, and we now have a 20-minute separation uh, before the next start. That's just as well, really, isn't it? <laughs> IRC3 starting at uh, 20 to 1. Big crowds here on the beach and on the Esplanade watching the start of the uh, Rolex Fastnet race uh, 2015. We've got some hazy sunshine, but we really don't have um, enough breeze to get these, uh, these underway with full spinnakers. Interestingly enough, though, we're just getting out towards the extreme end of the line, so over towards the mainland, over towards the Forley chimney. And when I look over towards the mainland, which is indeed a long way from where we are, um, but where the sea breeze would develop first, I can see a white spinnaker sailing along the shore there and then two other small little boats sailing uh, in that sea breeze. So it does look like over at the shoreline where we would expect uh, on the north side of the Solent, where we would expect the sea breeze to develop first, that it has actually already started over there because there's really not much here. So that's, uh, that's a good sign. It's whether it can develop quickly enough to actually start uh, coming in for the, for the uh, second half of these starts. Lovely mixture of uh, classics and uh, more modern yachts in this uh, start for IRC4, the uh, classic yawls. One of them, a previous winner in 1935, of the uh, race, stormy weather of cows. And Dorade won in uh, 1931 and 33 as well. So it's pretty, uh, <clears throat> they've got a very good track record, these three boats. The slow, stately progress, I think, is, is the way to describe it. Well, stately might not be the, uh, the adjective that comes to mind if you're on board Safran at the moment, because Safran, the Amoka, 60, one of the ones that James was talking about, that's going to be watched very closely indeed because she's a very, very modern, well, she's the latest generation. She's barely over the line. She's been, she started out at this far end of the line and she's been struggling whilst uh, watching the rest of her fleet slide away on the tide down towards the island shore. So that'll be very frustrating for them. It doesn't bode well for the smaller boats that are trying to start out at this, this end of the line. And uh, as we come out here and have a little look, it is really, really difficult for them. There's just, the tide just hasn't turned enough to actually sweep them over the line out at this end at the moment.